Dear investors, bonjour. This is Mike Yeru, founder of the Dividend Stocks Rocks and passionate investor. And today we're talking about Disney dividend cut. Actually, it's not even a cut, it's a suspension. So yesterday was uh, Disney's earning call. Uh, they had an okay quarter, but they had suspended their dividend. So today I'm gonna tell you why they have suspended their dividend, what am I doing with my shares, and what's happening with this whole story. But first, let's imagine Disney without COVID-19 for a second. Uh, put yourself back in 2019, company is the emperor content i'd say they have a unique library of content right so they have princesses all the other disney characters they have pixars marvel star wars and they just bought plenty of fox assets including avatar the rest of the x-men and part of ulu as well in the streaming businesses so basically disney is sitting on a gold mine of content but what's even better than that is disney has combined this Gold mine of content with multiple streams of income. They kind of created the perfect product ecosystem where the consumer enters into a cycle where it never ends. So it watches the movies, they like it, they go in the park, they see the theme, they want to do the ride for Avatar, they want to do the ride for Star Wars and so on. And then once they got out of the park, they want to hop on the cruise, they want to buy merchandises, action figures, and then another movie comes up and then so on. So that, that's that consumer cycle where uh, with one idea, one character, you create multiple streams of income for almost ever. If it wasn't enough, Disney has been an expert in acquiring this content, integrating into their business. And while I must admit, I was afraid that they would pretty much destroy Captain America and Iron Man, which was one of my favorite um, Marvel heroes when I was a kid. I was afraid that they would do the same trick with Star Wars and while some fans may agree I'm gonna stick with the numbers and box office numbers don't lie for the past decade uh, Disney has acquired bunch of properties in terms of content and they have created blockbusters movies after blockbusters after blockbusters pretty much the top 10 movies every single year you have half of it coming from any kind of disney studios uh, they did it a trick back in the 90s with espn as well so basically it's a growth company that has a huge incredible expertise in acquiring businesses integrating into their business model, creating multiple streams of income starting from now on. And they did it again with Fox Assets. And back in 2019, at the end of the year, they forgot to increase their dividend. Uh, yesterday, I did a video about payout ratio. Kind of funny, Disney payout ratio was under 30% at that time, and they still decided not to increase the dividend. The rationality behind it, while we were uh, disappointed at DSR that there was not just like a 2, 3, 5% dividend growth, you know, especially considering the low payout ratio, uh, we were disappointed, but we understand that the company wanted to focus its cash flow on its new assets. So obviously when you disperse several dozens of billions of dollars to buy as Fox assets, you kind of want to make sure that this will be a success. At the same time, they launch ESPN Plus and Disney Plus, two streaming services. So it requires a lot of money to launch those services as well. So I kind of understand that they didn't want to push too much on shareholders and they wanted to generate growth. Uh, remember, if you go back to Financial 101 uh, Theory, a company that has nothing to do with its cash and can find any investment project should De declare a dividend. In the opposite, when they have growing project, grow vectors that he can invest and create more value for the shareholder, they should keep the company, the money inside the company, which is pretty much what's happening with Disney. So then I was okay with the no dividend increase. And now COVID-19 happens, pandemic strikes the entire world, park has to close no more movie theaters, and it's pretty much the end of the world for a company like Disney. Um, think about it, it breaks the consumer cycle I was talking about. Uh, no more movies, no more teams, no more cruises. So basically, you're watching the old Star Wars or the Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, but that's about it, what you're going to get right now. Uh, and you're wearing your old t-shirts <laughs> showing the Jawas, right? Uh, so this is what's happening. The last quarter wasn't that bad because 
the park only closed at around mid-March, so basically we're only a few weeks without this income stream. And uh, at the same time, we were, they were integrating all the their Fox assets, so media, net, media, media network and distribution went up. Uh, and, and, uh, and digital consumer as well products went up at the same time. So that wasn't too bad. Revenue were up like 20, 21%. Um, earnings were down six by, uh, by 60%, mostly because they had integration fees, parks were closed for a few weeks, and also they spent a lot of money on their streaming services. Uh, the next quarter will be catastrophic obviously because then you'll have the full length of having no people in their parks we don't know when they're going to reopen yet and this is why the company decided to suspend their dividend they just thought you know what we have lots of project going on right now and we're not going to have a great year keep in mind that last year parks and teams have generated 45 percent of the company's operating income so basically half of the business is not generating profit right now this is not gonna look good for a year. However, growth vectors remains in place. And I'm going to keep my share for this very reason. The reason why the company suspends its dividend is not because the business model is flawed. It's not because it's not doing well. It's not because they're losing money. It's because they, have, they are forced to close businesses due to a pandemic. Uh, now ask yourself this, in 10 years from now, do we still live locked down in quarantine because of the COVID-19? No. What does create COVID-19 for Disney? Well, Disney Plus just surged, it exploded. Now it count more than 30 million paid subscribers and right now they have 55 subscribers, uh, 55 million subscribers to their network. So yes, a part of it is not paying. They're not making much money out of it right now, but this is the whole plan. The whole plan is to get as much many people, as many people as possible inside the streaming service, and then they're gonna start paying and they're gonna make money out of it. Um, from the original plan, Disney expected to reach like 60 million subscribers by 2024. They're gonna make it next quarter. So that's pretty good news because down the road, it just means that they confirm they have just created a new income stream to their incredible product ecosystem. Uh, this year is going to be rough. I'm not expecting shares to do well. I'm not expecting the company to do well, but the growth perspective for the next 10 years are incredible. And this is why, once again, I have to forgive the dividend suspension because it has nothing to do with the business. It has all to do with the virus and the virus will go one day or another. I know that a lot of people were telling me, well, Mike, I don't think that people are going to take cruises anymore and they're going to not going to go parks and, 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 you know, companies like Disney's and all the entertainment business will pretty much like die down and will not have any movie theaters. Well, you know what? I've heard this song before and it was called The Financial Crisis in 2008. Uh, a lot of people thought, you know, so many people lose their own. The housing market is never going to recover unless at least 10 years. Uh, banks are going to go bankrupt all over the world and then we're going to get stuck with the end of capitalism and so on and so on and so on. So, you know, uh, think about the worst that could happen. Freak out about it for maybe five minutes and then realize that most of what you always imagine to be the worst case scenario never happen in the real life. So fear is very powerful in our mind, but has pretty much nothing to do with the reality. So I'm keeping my shares. I'm staying invested and I hope that you do too. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. Go look at my yesterday video about the payout ratio to explain you a little bit more about dividend safety and how 100% dividend payout ratio should not uh, stop you from buying a stock. And until next video, stay invested.